Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Kelly Appeal TV podcast. You are listening to the Get In Tune in June series for 2022. Here we're going to discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly, where it's headed, where it's going, and, in, and everything in between. Now, you're listening to this series because we're talking about emotional areas that we can work on within our own lives based upon the case of Robert Sylvester Kelly and seeing how we can make sure that we don't get into the traumatic emotion that is being depicted from the Robert Sylvester Kelly convictions. So we're doing this while we're waiting on the sentencing and on the trial. Um, it's just something to keep us in tune with our emotion because there's a lot of trauma when we hear things that seems very extreme. We want to make sure that we're balancing ourselves with the information. So how many people in the listening audience right now believes that Robert Sylvester Kelly was physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally successful? Now, no, we know he was phys he was physically successful. He was very handsome. He was mentally successful because he was able to create the characteristics of a superstar. He was um, financially successful because he was million millionaire, billionaire, you know, possibly at, at if we can commute it, compute it all together. But what about emotionally? Now, this is offset of spiritually. So spiritually, we are the only ones who can determine how successful we are because of the walk that we take and the path that we move and motivate ourselves to do every day. But emotionally successful, what does that mean to you, to the listening audience? What are some of your ideas on being emotionally successful? Because... Most people, when they're talking about emotional success, we're talking about living an extraordinary life based on resilience. So we're going to be able to bounce back from things that takes place in our lives um, to keep us moving, to keep us, you know, in the real time moment. Now, mo the most desired emotion, according to an article in The Entrepreneur, is the, the most desired emotion people seek is happiness. And I do believe that. Do you believe happiness is um, the most desired emotion? Um, if not, what are some of your views of emotion? Um, what's the most desired emotion? You know, those who have emotional strength, they ach achieve this happiness, according to this article. And the lasting success is part of the journey. So you continue to be successful. You continue to be emotionally sound and you make sound judgments and you do what you need to do to be a success. Now, the mentally tough, they understand that emotions are the driving force of motivation. Some people build it off of ego. Some people build it off of just being aware, just knowing that they're resilient and they hold that emotion within them and they use it at the time to make sure that they don't go in the wrong direction or they don't attach to, uh, according um, to some people, adrenaline, the, the, the pump of the hype of chaos. And so their emotions are balanced. For this reason, emotional strength is a necessity. So we have to be emotionally strong, just like we are physically strong, mentally strong, emotionally strong in order to be happy and successful. Now, there are 15 traits, according to this article, that an emotionally successful person must have. Now, let's see how many of these 15 that Robert Sylvester Kelly possessed. The first one is confidence. How many people believe that Robert Sylvester Kelly was 100% confident? Put in the chat, number one, put yes, one yes. <laughs> All right, because emotional wealthy people are sure of their personal value and they don't need to feel like they have to audition for the acceptance and approval of others. They never have the, 
it's me, it's me attitude and the emotionally wealthy do not need attention because they are fulfilled within themselves as a byproduct of their own achievements and unceasing hard work in all areas of life. They understand to be magnificent is a great challenge and it takes a lot of effort. So I believe that on one hand, when Robert Sylvester Kelly was um, applying for the position when he was a street performer, I believe at that time he lacked, he had the ego, but he lacked the confidence because of the fact that, you know, he had to work so hard to get into the arena of being seen and heard. And a lot of knockdowns, you know, you take people, a lot of people who have been knocked down have a very hard time coming back up when it when it means the most. That's when a lot of people give up and they become self-doubting. But you turn that around and as R. Kelly did continue on, that shows great, magnificent challenge of great effort. So I believe Robert Sylvester Kelly possessed the confidence that it took even when the doors were shut, even when you know, people said no, even when, you know, directors and producers didn't call him back. And even with all the other allegations and things that went on in his career, I believe he held a great amount of confidence. So he did possess number one. Now, number two is resilience. So this is the emotional wealth that goes deep within the strength. So th this takes place when, when the doors have been shut and we get back out there and try it again, they're aware that they have become more successful. And so they encounter a host of people, haters, mean people, jealous people, cruel people, and that motivates them because they feel that they can change the world. And I believe that Robert, Sylv how many people believe that Robert Sylvester Kelly held the number two spot of the 15 traits because the more motivated they are to change the world the more they seek to be a success so they start opening doors for themselves walking through tupac said it best we are hungry please let us in we knocking on the door please let us in we hear you got you know a party going on in there and nobody's invited us to come in but yet this is a free world and now we about to knock the door down because you ain't letting us in and we hungry too. You know, it's kind of like that mentality. But the more motivated we are to change the world, the more we seek to succeed, to make a difference in the lives of others and reach their, to help them reach their fullest potential, not just keep the door shut because we want to keep everything for ourselves. So the more of these low level haters that are going to surface. And I'm sure that we see in his career and Robert Sylvester Kelly's career, many haters showed up for the dinner and they didn't have an invitation. They did not have the um, VIP. They, 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 they just threw themselves up into the VIP spot without any type of pass. And they just kept going, but he stayed resilient to from that. What are your thoughts there? We have to be our own source of power because the emotional, the more emotionally successful we are, the more adept we are to persistence and controlling the reactions to things that happen to us. They do not let those with destructive intentions deter their will. That's absolutely true. And that's exactly what he did. And that's exactly what he's the, the, the Robert Sylvester Kelly case is telling us to do the same with our own lives, not just to feel sorry for him, not just to watch his case, but to work on our own personal lives. How many people believe that? Okay. So number three, keep looking forward. No matter the circumstances, emotionally successful people do not make time to be blaming someone else. He made me do it, criticizing someone else. They made me do it or gossiping. This is what it is. No, they let go of resentments. You know, there's a four step cycle to the moon phase that we live under. 
and we may not even recognize it. We have a new moon in the first beginning of the week of the first month, you know, the first week of the month. And then the second week we have what is known as a a uh, retrograde moon, which goes into going back in and recycling your thoughts and thinking over things that you already know and you're aware of, like the personal issues in your relationships and how you're raising our children, how we're doing things educationally. And then the third week is the um, intergrade cycle. Sometimes it falls in the third week where we just go in and we become a hermit for a week and then we just think about things. What are we going to do for ourselves or what have we done? Kind of give ourselves that vacational accolade. And then the fourth is the full moon. And the full moon means letting things go. After you've gone through those four, four week cycles, you know, death just occurs on a rotational cycle. It, well, it does. It does because death comes in, in ways that you know, is a continual thing. And it something doesn't have to physically die. It can just be something that's let go. You know, we can let go of things in order to pursue what it is that we want to do next with our lives. And that means letting go of people who no longer serve us, people who no longer, you know, have our best interest at heart, people who we have given so much and never got anything back in return. I dare yourself to love yourself and reject what others expect of you just to see how they'll behave. And then you'll see who's in your camp and who's not in your camp. So keep looking forward. Um, when we stay resentful, so if Robert Sylvester Kelly comes home and he's hating everybody for all the lies that other people told, and then he's saying, well, everybody's going to do this to me. <laughs> then that's going to make him very resentful. And then he's going to be stuck in that life situation that makes him bitter and makes him lose and waste energy. So that's not what we're trying to do. And we shouldn't want to do that for our own lives. We should want to be successful emotionally and say, okay, haters, you're trying to do this to R. Kelly, knowing that sentencing is about to come and now all this other stuff is making its ugly, rearing its ugly head, trying to find other ways to sabotage and devour. We're going to let that go. And we're going to work on some positive energy over here at the R. Kelly Appeal TV channel. We ain't going over there for a little bit. We're we going to let this thing just, just marinate and let time tell itself. Because the only thing that is guaranteed is time and what happens in that time and space. So if someone else holds resentments against them and will not let go of a grudge, we need to move on from these people. Emotionally successful people does not waste energy to prove themselves to someone unwilling to accept. You know, we had a, a person who says they're not even our Kelly supporter, but yet they were on the channel. And then they said that, um, we're ignorant for believing that the sisters are the sisters. Who's still stuck on that? Why are we still stuck there? We have moved on for so many years later and we're working on a whole agenda here. So sometimes we get stuck in the mundane argument of it all. And I don't argue with people. I'm very, very confident within the resilience that I've experienced and I look, keep, keep it moving and looking forward. So I don't let those things stop me. And it's, it's a never ending cycle all the way down to your friends, to your family, you know, who's there for you, you know, and number four. So how many people believe number three, R. Kelly did keep as far as an emotional position as a trait for emotional success. How many people believe that number three, he kept looking forward because even in his situations with his court dates and all that, he would get on and share with his fans exactly how, you know, God got this, you know, this is something that this too shall pass. 
And this was something that he was just going through and just keep a prayer out for him. He always mentioned that. So he always looked forward to me. And I do believe that he was emotionally wealthy and looking forward regardless of the haters. Number four, don't compromise. Do not compromise. Emotionally successful individuals do not compromise who they are or what they believe for anyone. You don't have to be a chameleon. They do what they do in life because they love doing it. So Robert Sylvester Keller, Kelly was a phenomenal singer and they are not inclined to slow down. He never slowed down, changed or stopped being who he was for naysayers or couch critics who want to, to just have something to say. Yeah. Those who don't compromise themselves. They are clear that it takes a small mind to criticize a brilliant idea. The emotionally successful stays clear of those who try to dim their shine. They remain unwaveringly true to their larger purpose. So number four, how many of us <clears throat> as emotionally successful people don't compromise yourself? How many of us say, no, nah, I'm cool, you know, I'm good. Thank you. Oh, good looking out, but I'm cool. I'm a pass on this one. How many of us, or do we say, oh, I'm down. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna be there. It's all good. I don't go to bars. I used to, I used to sing in bars. I used to be a singer, um, in the nightclubs. And one thing I realized when I got into my recovery, which I've been in recovery since March 23rd, 2011. One thing I had to do was change my people, places, and my things. So I was invited to a bar for a birthday bash and all that's good. But I said, no, thank you. I will take you to dinner for your birthday, but I'm not going to a bar. I'm And, and let alone a bar that has the mentality that's very low vibrational. So it's not that I think I'm better than, it's just that I'm not the chameleon that just plays into the role. So I, I, I feel that R. Kelly really and truly did not compromise himself, but I believe that what he did was he brought people into the camp that was not suitable for him because of his change. But later, Right before the whole, you know, um, the federal indictments and everything, he was really and truly talking about nonprofit agency work. He was talking about getting into with the community, working with celebrities. He was also talking about um, changing his whole, whole way that people looked at him. He was talking about that. And so he had gotten to the point where he was pushed into the arena at a young age, but he was maturing as he came out of it. And they didn't like that. The haters didn't like that because now they can't use them. You know, of course, if I'm constantly giving money and I'm the one that's always, you know, balling at the parties. So I'm the one that's fronting everybody's happiness. Again, remember what the article said at the beginning. The number one emotion that everyone seeks is happiness. So if I'm the one that's always footing the bill, you always happy. No matter what I got in my pocket, you don't know what I got to do. You don't know what I got to pay. It's always your, about your happiness. Then that's compromising. That's compromising one's self. So check yourself. You know, not only R. Kelly's case, let's check ourselves and be accountable for our own emotional success. Number five, faith. Do you believe that Robert Sylvester Kelly held a great amount of faith when it came down to living and loving and being emotionally successful? So number five, put Y or N, yes or no? Because those who love themselves understand who they are. Did he understand who he was? They are not afraid to go after what they want. 
Was he afraid to go after anything that he desired, that he wanted? They patiently worked through fears and self-doubt. Did he work through those fears and self-doubt? In that 19 minute, I admit, I believe he worked through his faith on that, on that 19 minute, I admit, um, he told a lot of things to us. If we were truly listening, reading between the lines, these extraordinary people believe that all they do in life will be demonstrated through their desired results. So he's a great manifester. I've said that from day one, since the first segment on this R. Kelly Appeal TV channel, um, if you go back and look at that very first video, you'll hear me say he's a great manifester. These exceptional people, um, in exceptional people choose the strenuous life. They don't take the easy road. They don't take, oh, you just take care of me. No, they go out there and they get it. They're go-getters. They're, they're entrepreneur seekers. They are people who are going to go deeper for the ambition and the journey so that they can, can be, a emo they can actually be a success in all areas, physical, mental, spiritual, financial, emotional, uh, um, and other, other relational familial situations. It takes a happy and successful person to continue to go deep within the journey and be committed to that journey. Because what happens is we take pride in the struggles as well as contribute the emotional success choice over fear. Our faith must be enduring. We must know that to endure Joy will eventually come, but we got to continue to fight through. That's why I said with a Robert Sylvester Kelly right now, he should be meditating and manifesting some great things in his life so that he can come on and get up out of there. He can't just depend on us as supporters and, and, you know, people who are warriors to do the work for him. He should be in there meditating both night and day, you know? Um, and that's what's going to help them. So how many believe that Robert Sylvester Kelly had faith, have faith in what's going to take place in his life right now on number five, we put wire in and you can keep going into why you believe it. And then we're going to leave some space at the end where you can put whatever one you really hold, um, important. That's the one that you can talk about. Number six, maturity. For the emotionally successful person, the mastery of the success and the deep happiness can really come through hard work, sweat, challenge, surviving the storm. Accepting that life is difficult because they've already embraced the truth and went above it. The emotionally wealthy put responsibility before leisure and choose kindness over rightness. How many believe that R. Kelly had a mature trait in his personality that pushed him into his maturity? I believe he was definitely going through his maturity stage. Number seven, discerning, having that intuition, the emotionally successful will reason in a conscious way. They're not going to expose themselves to people who discourage or demoralize or steal from them or deliberately uh, keep company with people who are driving um, uh, agendas. They want to keep company with people who are inspiring, honest, committed, going somewhere special in their lives. And they see it. This energy is going to be contagious, according to this article, and the emotionally wealthy are discerning of the company they keep staying clear of negative people. How many believe that R. Kelly had the discerning? I believe he had the discerning. He just had too many people around that wasn't listening to the fact that this was discerning. He knew in his heart, he knew who was for him and who was against him. He probably already knew everything that he knows in there now. Nothing is new to him because he was a unique person, very spiritually aware and unique person. 
Okay, number eight, being real. How many people believe that R. Kelly was real? Because emotionally successful people are not afraid to be real or to be vulnerable. They have the courage to show the world who they are. They let people in because they know all good relationships are based in openness, honesty, authenticity, and integrity. There are no guessing games with these exceptional people. Others know exactly where they stand with them. Emotionally uh, successful individuals expect the best from others and give the best of themselves at all times. They choose authentically over secure, insecurity. So they would rather be real than to be insecure. So how many people believe that R. Kelly felt the um, trait of number eight, keeping it real with people. Number nine, ready, being ready. Emotionally successful people, when the lights, camera, and action comes on, they're ready for the show. They're ready to put on a show. Um, they can't wait to get up in the morning. They, they, they get up first person. They're up with the birds. They never take life or opportunity for granted. They are not lazy in the mind. They are consumed with internal sense of urgency and enthusiasm to be ready to get started and to make results happen. How many people do we know, even in our own lives, that are ready, emotionally successfully ready? Number 10, self-preservation. The emotionally successful know the importance of taking the necessary time to refuel and care for themselves. Having that in, in um, it's called um, intergrade cycle, that week where you just take that whole week to just unwind, refuel and do less out there and do more internally. And they understand the value of unplugging the world, unplugging social media and acting within themselves excited. These exceptional individuals do not run from their challenges, but know that sometimes the best option is to just hold them and do nothing but observe, just observe what's going on. They appreciate the slow moments in life when they can do nothing but live, breathe and feel inner peace. That's so perfect. And number, do you believe that he had the opportunity to look at self-preservation with all the people that were surrounding him and all the things he had to do? What time did he have for himself? Self-preservation. Number 11, value time. Emotionally successful people do not waste their time doing anything that they don't want to do. They understand that they must be directed and committed and focusing on what they love to do. By focusing on your passion, we figure out what to do to continue growing in those passions. These powerful individuals understand they won't love every part of the journey. Yes, sometimes they're going to be difficult. What they don't love, they tolerate as necessary to realizing the bigger vision, the bigger picture. Emotionally successful people waste no time or effort on tasks that are meaningless, such as gossiping, you know, oh, um, putting their point of view out there like it, that's the only point of view that there is. Being narcissistic. Number 12. Well, let's go back to 11. How many people believe that R. Kelly valued his time? I believe he did, because if not, he wouldn't have been the king of R&B. He just would not have. Number 12, have limits. How many people believe that R. Kelly had boundaries? Because the emotionally successful are aware that they have to have healthy and emotional boundaries that they must say no at times when they need to. A person without limits is a pushover. The emotionally successful count on themselves as the source of their own power. They know what is right and what is wrong for them based on life experiences for them. No means no. How many people believe that he was strong enough to hold the characteristics of having limits? Number 13. 
Number 13, altruistic. Emotional, emotionally healthy people will have great empathy for others and they'll give back by donating money or time to people, causes, events. Um, they donate a certain amount of their income, believing that all will go give back, be returned to them tenfold. The emotionally supportive do not live a mindset of lack. Their belief that there is enough for everyone makes them unafraid and unselfish when giving of themselves financially and otherwise. And definitely he had an altruistic personality, a personality that he saw the world as optimistic. He knew that there's enough to go around for everyone. It was just the greedy people that was around him that created this look that he has now. How many people believe that he had an altruistic character trait where he gave, I think he gave far too much. Number 14, true to themselves. The emotionally supportive person is independent and embraces exactly who they are. The emotionally uh, successful don't think about fitting in because they are too busy standing out being who they are. These extraordinary individuals realize these um, people who are trying to fit in are not going to be successful because they are not true to themselves. The emotionally successful are the world's greatest. <laughs> the emotionally successful are the world's greatest pioneers, trend centers, honorable, honorable leaders, and R&B singers. Let's put him in. Let's put him in there. I believe definitely being true, true to self, he was. I believe he was. What's your view on number 14? And finally, number 15 creates happiness. Do you think he created his own happiness? Because the emotionally successful person is consistent in discipline. And he was, he kept his body up. He kept his, his facial beauty up. You know, they know the power of their thoughts over their mind and body. This emotional awareness allows these exceptional people to learn from their thoughts that do not promote happiness or success. So they want to put away those thoughts. Emotionally wealthy individuals have learned to hold their uncomfortable emotions rather than react to them. Knowing that sitting with life's uncertainties makes those uncertainties fade on their own without the necessity of acting out reactively. So yeah, he wasn't the type to wild out all the time. So with all the chaos that was going on in his life, somehow or another, he made his life worth um, that peace and calmness and tranquility. I believe he kept his thoughts, emotions, and responses towards success and away from fear-based defeatist thinking. And that's what has made him so successful. This was a great entrepreneur um, article. And if you get a chance and you want to go and look at it to do some homework for yourself, it is called The Entrepreneur um, 15 Traits of Emotionally Wealthy People by Sherry Campbell. And it was um, printed June 4th, 2015. So I want to just say that out of these 15 character traits, I believe that Robert Sylvester Kelly carried a majority of them. There are a few that he should have, uh, he could have maybe done a little better on, but I'm going to leave the traits so you guys can now take a few minutes to comment your own personal views on so we can keep them on the live historicals. Um, of the channel. If this is going down in history. Nothing will be deleted. So um, yeah, so please share your thoughts and share this video with someone who may need this information because I believe that we can work on all of these traits for ourselves. So we will never find ourselves in the position of Robert Sylvester Kelly and where he's at at this moment. Many of us, you know, has followed his life and it's about building ourselves 
just like we built ourselves when we were listening to the top chart album that was just coming out. And we were so happy when to see him dancing and we started dancing. So we had our connection. We have our connection. Even in this moment, we have our connection. And so it's about us building ourselves up because in order to be able to face him when he returns, we have to have our home decent and in order because you never know who he's going to want to be with, who he who he's going to want to stay with. You don't know who's going to turn their back on him to where he will be at your front door. So we have to get ourselves emotionally ready for something like that to take place. Um, it's amazing. All of the supporters and the sponsors that keeps his, the love of Robert Sylvester Kelly alive. Um, and like I was saying, don't just give your money away. Don't throw it away. Hold it, hold your money, keep your money. And when it's time, the spirit will tell you what to do. Even if it's all the way down to creating a trust fund in the name of, you know, Robert Sylvester Kelly or someone so that it re it goes to him, you know, we have to learn to be more creative in business technology because things are changing. Life is changing. And if we don't change with the crypto system, the Bitcoin system, then we better know what we're doing if the almighty dollar falls short. So that's a whole nother topic there. But being emotionally successful means that we're going to have to adhere and learn new ways of doing things. So I thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing this podcast, and um, we'll see you tomorrow with another Get In Tune in June 2022. Um, and if you have some ideas of things that you want researched and talked about and discussed, please don't hesitate to put it in the live chat so I can um, begin my research on it. Thank you. Oh, we'll have 15 minutes from this point to share all of text and documents so you can just start to type now. And with that, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.